<gasps> Welcome back to the Outer Wilds. Strange, I feel like I've been here before. I've stood on this ground, roasted these marshmallows. In fact, I'm pretty sure I saved the universe already, yet here I am again. Ah, the radio tower has reopened. Hornfells must have finally repaired the damage caused by that rogue model rocket. Well, let's see what's inside. And we're recording. Uh, it's been two days since the launch of the Deep Space Satellite, and I'm about to view the first batch of photos. Let the record show that on this historic day, Outer Wilds Ventures has... Uh, ah, they're printing, they're printing. Here they come. Stars above, will you look at that? There's Brittle Hollow, and look, that's Hollow's Lantern, and there's Giant Steep, and, and the Quantum Moon. I'm speechless, completely speechless. Every single astral body in our magnificent solar system. Hold on, what is that? That can't be right, that's, I mean, that's not even possible. Am I interpreting this photo correctly? What's even stranger is, it doesn't show up in either of the other photos, just this one. Well, there must have been an equipment malfunction, I suppose. Only sensible explanation for it. I'll radio Gabbro and ask them to go examine the satellite's lens for defects. Hornfells must be referring to this photo, where a strange black spot obstructs the view of the sun. I'll go find the satellite and see if Gabbro fixed the problem. Gabbro here, checking in on the Deep Space Satellite per ground control's request to check out a possible equipment problem. See, Hornfells, I do work too. Uh, everything looks uh, A-OK, -okay, ground control, no dust or scratches on the lens, and no evidence of sparking or violent explosions. So I guess that rules out an equipment malfunction. If it's nothing wrong with the satellite itself, I guess the problem's out there. Only thing to do is wait until the satellite reaches 40 degrees, as per the photo, and see if anything happens. Which may take some time. Well, good job I'm not in a rush, not like we're facing the inevitable heat death of the universe, or anything. No, I'll just wait it out. Uh, oxygen's running a little low, better get back to the ship to recharge. Thinking about it, I might not have to wait all that long. I know this may seem like I'm losing my mind, or at least losing the will to live, but fear not, this isn't my first time loop rodeo. All it takes is a quick and painless suffocation, a trip back in time. A flight straight to the deep space probe and voila! Well, would you look at that? There really is something there. Look at him, he's heading for that small moon. That's no moon. It's a space station, and it's been here this whole time, hidden from view in calm orbit around our sun. That's why we could only see it from a certain angle. During an eclipse, this solar system continues to amaze, as does this place. Perfection of the Stanford Taurus Principle. The entire system is rotating with just enough force to mimic the gravitational pull of my home planet. It's a shame no one else seems to be around to witness such a marvel. This station housed life at some point, but now the river is the only thing still moving. Some of these shacks were homes, temples, picture houses. Finding a slide reel and a light source, I can see who exactly once lived here. They were inhabitants of a terrestrial moon in a distant solar system, light years from the outer wilds. They picked up the eye of the universe's signal and were immediately fascinated. What had caused this beacon to call out to them? Why them? Who is them, exactly? They mostly resemble owls, but with great antlers and piercing eyes. They're a, a little bit creepy, to be honest. I'm sure they were lovely. They seem to enjoy stargazing, music, and board games. Us Hearthians enjoy many of the same simple pleasures, but I don't know, man, I'm, I'm just like a little bit on edge right now. I continue exploring until an explosion echoes nearby. The dam collapses, water rushing everywhere. I'm victim to the current. I lose my bearings and end up, I don't even know where. But I do know that sound. Time is of the essence. If I can find one more clue before time drags me back to the starting line, maybe I can... Uh, oh, okay, never mind. Yes, here I am once again meddling in the mysteries of the Outer Wilds. Hello. 
lovely of you to join me. The Echoes of the IDLC is very cleverly woven into Outer Wilds' main story. The space station known as the Stranger arrived in the solar system long before any Hearthian, before even the Nomai, but only now has it come out of hiding. Echoes of the Eye is also a much trickier and at times obscure puzzle solving exercise than the main game and it requires a very sharp and maintained focus to get to the ending but that ending is also worth it. Before we get there though let's recap Echoes of the Eye and before we do that I should say that I've made a video on the Outer Worlds main story um, which you know you're welcome to watch <laughs> you know if you want the whole story but uh, you know, you don't have to watch it. But if you do, it may even be better to watch it after this video because Echoes of the Eye is technically a prequel. But do whatever you want to do, let's just get on with the video. <laughs> Much like the Nomai's ancient writings dotted through the Outer Wilds, snippets of the Stranger's past can be found in slide reels. The Stranger's inhabitants were the first to discover the Eye of the Universe. Driven by the same intrigue that gripped the Nomai, they stripped their homeworld of its natural resources to build the Stranger. It cost them everything, but they succeeded, and they set course across the stars to the Outer Wilds. Their decision to boldly go where none had gone before was not met with much reward. On analysing the Eye, they saw visions of death, the destruction of all life in the solar system. Cursed with this knowledge, the stranger's inhabitants came to resent the eye. They had uprooted their civilization to follow a false beacon. They had given everything for nothing in return, and with nowhere to return to, regret and uncertainty was all that lay before them. None were ready to face this new reality. Instead, they looked to their past. Fragmented slides show a way of reaching the inhabitants' homeworld or another version of it that's still intact. Travelling there involves falling asleep by a fire, but not always, it's hard to make sense of it. Many of the slides have been burned away, intentionally, I think, as there are rooms filled with discarded reels. Parts of this story aren't meant for my eyes, it would seem. But after watching and re-watching and re-watching again, I realised that falling asleep by a fire with this artefact in hand will transport me to this other world. Only, the fireplaces where the experiments took place are all extinguished. The only one I can find resides in this strange submerged structure, crackling next to a heavy sealed vault. Whatever's inside, they didn't want it getting out. I stand before a vast lake. The vault is here, still sealed shut. The symbols on its front match those dotted on the lake's islands, but I can't reach any of them. Then again, I already knew the paths there wouldn't be simple. I've seen the routes taken to get to these islands, following fireflies and crossing invisible bridges. If I tread carefully along the same path, where will I end up? Where do I even begin? That planet, it's their homeworld. The place they're trying so desperately to return to, but I must visit it through the darkness. That's why the stranger is empty. They left this world behind. I awake in a new place entirely. Now if I can just remember the path laid out in the other reels. I know one is tucked away beneath the- <laughs> Jesus Christ. While their physical form has wasted away, their minds still wander in another world. Yeah, that usually doesn't end well. Like finding my way around wasn't hard enough, now I've got to sneak around as well. But I manage it in the end. Although I'm not led to the islands, it's a cave. Within it are intact versions of the slide reels I found on the stranger. More than reels, these are revelations. The inhabitants built a probe to block the eye of the universe's signal, so none would suffer the same fate as they did. 
They then built this place, not a dream world but a simulation, a recreation of their homeworld before it was destroyed. And like any simulation, things can go wrong. There are reports of glitches that occur if you fall out of a load state or leave the proximity of your artifact. By manipulating the boundaries of the simulation in this way, I can make my way to each of the lake's islands and extinguish the seals, unlocking whatever lies inside the vault. And now, Outer Wild's story is complete. The stranger's inhabitants chose a life inside their minds over a life inside the station. In time, the real world faded away. The stranger became a ghost floating aimlessly in space. One soul's actions earned them an eternal punishment trapped inside the real world and the simulation but those actions would also set in motion a cascade of discoveries spanning species and generations. Another chance to approach the biggest question in the universe, the question of life, meaning and everything else. The chance to stop at nothing to find the answer. The chance to build new civilizations, bring life to new corners of the galaxy, even if, with all life, comes the looming inevitability of death. These are the echoes of the eye of the universe, whispers that travel time and space to reach one young Hearthian explorer, one who would go on to unravel the mysteries of the outer wilds. While Outer Wilds finale is very open-ended and leaves room for questions and interpretation, Echoes of the Eyes ending is more about tying the overall plot together, and I think that's its greatest strength. It's separate enough from the main game to warrant individual merit. Um, exploring the stranger is possible even if it's the very first thing you find in the Outer Wilds. But if it's the last thing you encounter, it adds real gravitas to the events of the main game lining up all the pieces for a satisfying conclusion. Piecing together the story while on board The Stranger though, like collecting the slide reels and exploring the simulation, is very hard at times. Outer Wild certainly has moments of this too, where clues are hidden away from all but the most attentive of players. Echoes of the Eye cranks that up to 11. You must pay great attention to every slide reel and connect the dots yourself because no other help is available, at least not within the game. If you enjoyed Outer Wilds enough to get this DLC, then this might seem like a bit of a counterintuitive point, because what makes this game so great is unraveling the mystery for yourself, and the reward for that, from a narrative point of view, is lost if you are just following the IGN guide every step of the way. While I agree with that sentiment, and I probably would put myself in that category, Echoes of the Eye really pushes the boundaries of what's expected at times, and that's not because of the difficulty of the puzzles, but because of their accessibility. The ship log is of great use in the main game. It's the only thing, other than the player's memory, that doesn't reset each time loop, and so works to recap your recent discoveries and hint at what's left to explore. The same is true in Echoes of the Eye, but I rarely found the stranger's log entries useful. What would have been useful was if the ship log stored the side reels and the visions you found so you could look over them whenever you want. Take the vision you receive opening the prisoner's vault as an example.
This symbolizes going to one of the towers, locating the mural that includes the inhabitants' home planet, and removing the lanterns, which will open the secret passageway down to the fireplace where you can enter the simulation. When laid out like that, yes, you can see what this vision is depicting, but the first time seeing it, not so much. And every subsequent time you want to see it, you must board the stranger, get to the submerged structure, enter the simulation, and attempt to open the vault, all while the time loop ticks down ready to send you all the way back to Timber Hearth. <gasps> so you finally figure that out. Then you enter the simulation at the Starlit Cove and must follow that area's path to the hidden archive, which looks like this. Again, not incredibly obvious, and of course, these archive path reels are just that little bit more hidden than the others, and so rewatching them requires just that little bit more time. It's at these points that I felt the brevity of Outer Wilds' 22 minute time loop, um, and thought that Echoes of the Eye's puzzles just needed a little bit more room to breathe, um, because I think they're more complex than the puzzles in the main game, because they're layered within both the stranger and the simulation, and also because they often require a much slower approach. Because, you know, there are demented seven-foot owl people trying to murder you. As the time loops drew on, the sound of the impending supernova brought with it just a tinge of frustration, which I don't remember happening in the main game. While the story may be hard to progress at times, it's never hard to follow. And there may be a, a little bit of poetic license shown, like I'm not sure how the inhabitants were able to construct a one-to-one -one scale replica of their homeworld without knowing how to access it. <laughs> and how exactly falling asleep at a fire while holding this small metal lamp ended up being the correct way to access it? I don't really know, but you know, it's science fiction. Suspension of disbelief is, is just part of the package, as they say. To me, Echoes of the Eye feels like a doubling down on the Outer Wilds formula. Its puzzles are more obscure, its story is more obfuscated, and it asks more of the player to decipher its meaning. Maybe that raises the bar for entry a little bit, but I think that's okay in a DLC. Your audience has likely already interacted with and enjoyed your game, so push the boundaries. That's preferred to just supplying more of the same, I think. And in Echoes of the Eye's case, it's a hugely rewarding conclusion to this masterpiece of storytelling told through exploration. This game about the malleability of time and the immensity of an infinite space. And yet, here I am, sad that I've seen all there is to see. <laughs>